Okay, I was asked to um, do a quick video, quick demo of how to do a back braid. When you've got a round braid, like in this case it's a four strand round braid, um, how to do this back braid where you take the the round braid and you braid it back into itself here. Um, how is that accomplished? Um, so I will try and show that in a first pers person perspective. Um, there, just to start off, I want to say, you know, show you the difference here uh, in this one is a two-tone braid. Two of these strands were dark, two were light, and they were done in a diamond-shaped pattern. So when I braid them back, you'll see that I pair up dark with dark and light with light. Obviously, if it's a one-color deal, then you don't have to be too particular about the uh, colors. Um, these back braids, um, before I do the actual demo too, I want to tell you that the principle here is like with a lot of braiding, that if you braid, if you take any loose tip and you braid it under three others, then it is fixed in place usually enough. Now, I, what I do is, um, once I've got it back braided, so the, the braid comes back into itself, I would then cover it with a decorative knot, like this one. Um, here's a few more examples of a knot that covers that back braid. There, too, is another one. Okay, so... Let's get to the actual back braiding. I've made this uh, example in a very big, uh, big um, thongs here that I've been using. I cut these from um, an old uh, garbagey leather that um, really looked awful. It was like looked like shiny plastic and horrible colors and all that, but it now comes in handy to show you, um, demo to you, how to do the back braid. So, when you end with a round braid, that is what you end with. You end with two strands running in this direction, and you end with two strands running in that direction. And, um, so that's what you want to have very clear. You end with that tight. And now, what I do at this point is the following. I take these four strands there with my thumb over them. So I have that in place. And it just does not loosen up or anything. I've got them situated two in that direction, two in this direction. So then I decide where I'm going to back braid them. And you can see there, I've curled this however long I want to handle. If I just want a little loop or I want a handle or whatever I want, um, that's what you can decide on. Um, and what I have now is I hold this end of my braiding over the other piece. And you'll see that the braiding does exactly the same in this direction that it does in this direction. Under one, over one, under one, over one is a four strand round braid, so that's what we have. Okay, so now what I do is I decide I've got, if you look carefully, two strands running that way. And what I'll do with them is I will place them on top of two strands. That one, let's say, and that one uh, that runs that way as well. And that's what I do first. I first place these two in on those two positions. And the way I do that is the following. 
I put this, um, open up that loop there, and I place the one that I'm going to put in there, in there, and I pull it through. Okay, so it is in place. There you can see how that's in place. Okay, then the one next to it, running parallel to it, will run parallel on that one. So there, I will now put that one in place. So I open up that one a little bit. And I put this one's tip in there and I make sure that they're not twisted. And then what I do once I've got both in there, I pull them fairly snug against their positions there. If you can see, um, there I've got them uh, in there. Now, what I do now um, is I take, I flip this over. So you can see that, you see how they're starting to disappear into the whole pattern. Um, now I flip the whole thing over so that they're upside down. There's the other two that I've not weave, woven into, and there's the two that I have woven into their partners. So, if you look carefully, I'm going to flip this slightly back, and I want you to focus on this front one that I have in there. Goes in there. The this this strand that that has just come under it. That strand is right next to it. So it's going to follow, it's going to follow, it's going to follow this one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in there. see this one that hasn't been incorporated there yet. It runs parallel. If we look at here, this one, I'm holding my hand, runs parallel to that one. So it must run parallel all the way. It's parallel to that one, so it will go in underneath here. And this is just a tip that I have that is always the situation. Uh, once you place this backmost um, one in there, what you will notice is that it is between the first two that I put in place. So that you've got the first one I put in place, then this one, then that one, and these two come this way around and those two go that way around and it's they still have this pattern of one over one under one over one okay so now i pull them fairly snug um, somewhat so that there's uh, a nice shape to the loop okay and then I um, now uh, start, usually I like to start from the back, meaning from, from here, from this direction, I move up and I do the backmost one, so this strand next, and you'll see now it's guiding you as to where it has to go. Uh, it is following on top of this one, and it'll always follow on top of, of uh, the previous strands because it's kind of 
gonna cover them and camouflage its incorporation there there we go so now you can see how these are running two on top of each other the bottom one is the original stand and the top one comes from this part of the loop that I'm weaving into this now from here on it's fairly simple it's simply a case of each one of these just keeps on following the strand that it is already on top of of course what it also always helps with me with back braiding I cut the tips of the lace sharp with a sharp tip um, so that it is easy to push it in underneath there I uh, really don't go to all the trouble of, of attaching needles to the tips of the threads once you open it up like this with your lacing thread then it's easy to just slip that tip in there and pull it through there we go now from what I mentioned right at the start was that um, the ideal situation is if each of these tips that I'm working with if each of them can weave under three of the previous parts then it should be fairly well established okay and um, I'll show you now how we can count that so let's say this one that I've just done so it has just gone under this one there Bring it slightly closer it's just gone under this one that's one it's gone under that that's two and it's gone under that that's three so it is good it is in position I can cut it off right there this back one let's see that it's gone under one under two and that's all that is part of its original weave so it's only gone under two so okay let's um do it what it once more and I pull them snug and tight oh not that tight this is very really bad leather <laughs> um, snug and tight just so that they don't distort the weave but there it is back braided um, and it's it's really that simple if you um, look at the beginning of that situation um, that is how uh, that's a tricky part is placing the two on top weaving them in first on the two parallel ones then flipping the whole thing over doing the other two uh, so that you've got one from this side one from that side one from this side one from that side and there you go okay I hope that um, helped uh, if there are questions I um, might redo this or answer the questions uh, wherever this is posted so um, just have fun and I hope this was of some help to you. Thank you. Bye-bye.